Hey everybody, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we're continuing that Westcott versus Godox comparison and in today's video we're going to be comparing the Westcott FJ200 versus the Godox 8200 Pro aka the Flashpoint Evolve 200 Pro. Alright, I want to start off by saying that I don't think that this is a great comparison. Sure, the FJ200 is a 200 watt flash just like the Godox 8200 Pro. It was obviously released as a competitor to the 8200 Pro but I think these two flashes are too different to really compare and that comes down to two big things. One, the FJ200 is just significantly larger than the 8200 Pro. They are roughly the same length when they have their bare bulbs and they are roughly the same weight. So it's pretty much the same experience uh, when they are on a stand like you see here. But what is different is packing these two strobes. I can put two of these almost anywhere that I put one of these. For instance, this takes up a 70 to 200 sized area in a roller case, whereas I can stack two of these on top of each other in the same area. Um, and it's even less space if we have the Fresnel head on here instead of the bare ball, which brings me to my second point. The FJ200 does nothing to compare against the 8200 Pro in terms of that multiple head design, that modular design that people love so much about the 8200 Pro. Now, maybe you're not an 8200 Pro owner, so you don't know what I'm talking about here. All I'm talking about is this, the bare bulb head can be exchanged with a Fresnel head and then you've got a flash that is just compatible with an entirely different lineup of accessories such as mag mod equipment or anything really optimized for a speed light. Now the bare bulb and the Fresnel head, these two heads right here, those come by default with the 8200 Pro and there's also this round head which was released a little bit later. This one allows you to attach some proprietary magnetic modifiers. It's also got a beautiful light quality to it. This whole modular aspect is just something that the 8200 Pro can do that the FJ200 cannot do. With that, I have to say that the FJ200 just seems more comparable to the newer 8300 Pro available from Godox just because that is only a bare bulb. It has a compact modifier attachment. It's in a cylinder-like shape. Really, the 8300 Pro is even shorter, even more compact, although the FJ200 is much lighter. Now, if you exclude that additional functionality with the Fresnel head, with the round head, then sure, we can start looking at these two lights and seeing how they compare head to head. Now, we already went over the head options available on the Godox 8200 Pro. The Westcott FJ200 is, again, only a bare bulb design. On the front of the Westcott FJ200, we have a bulb that is kind of recessed. If you're looking at it from the side, the bare bulb protrudes from the front just a little bit. So it's not like a pro photo product where the bulb is recessed deeply and then covered and protected by some type of glass which has pros and cons. Instead, you're still getting most of the bare bulb effect here in that this is going to spread out really wide, fill a soft box well so it doesn't have those cons of the pro photo system. But at the same time, it's recessed to the point where, you know, something might bump into this and you're not just immediately going to break that bulb because it's not just hanging out all loosey goosey. So I, I kind of like this balance of bare ball, but still semi protected. Now I mentioned the round head that is available for the 8200 Pro and how that has some magnetic attachments that you can put on to shape the light. The FJ200 does have something similar. They have things like snoots, grids, and gels that will attach either directly to it or in combination with the reflector. So it's not like this doesn't have any of that functionality. It's just it doesn't have that same versatility as the Godox 8200 Pro. In terms of comparing the output, I took both of these lights, obviously the bare bulb on the FJ200 and I used the bare bulb on the Godox 8200 Pro. I put them both in the same softbox and the 8200 Pro produced one tenth stop more light output when both were at their peak brightness, so at their full powers. Now, I would consider that an equal amount of light because chances are I could probably switch the modifier and actually dig up one where the Westcott might be one tenth of a stop higher. So for all purposes, these two have an identical peak brightness. In HSS, the 8200 Pro was slightly brighter, but like, less than a third stop. So not a big deal separating these two in high speed sync either. Now, in addition to the peak output, I also take a look at the total range that these two lights can produce. And the Godox 8200 produces about a half stop more output from its peak power to its minimum power than the Westcott FJ200. 
And while that on its own isn't a huge deal, what that tends to mean is that the Godox 8200 Pro has more output stability. So as you decrease the power one stop, you're actually gonna get one stop of output change on the light. Whereas in the lower power levels, the Westcott starts to fall short a little bit and it's not really dropping a full stop in between each power level. Next up is color property and color accuracy, which is something that the Westcott marketed heavily. I think they have a, I have a quote here. The Westcott FJ200 has unrivaled color consistency at every power level. In my testing, both of these lights offered near identical color accuracy in their color stable modes. From max to minimum, the Westcott produced a 250 Kelvin difference and the uh, Godox 8200 Pro produced about a 260 Kelvin difference, so only 10 Kelvin separates these two in their color stable modes. But I will still give color to Westcott because the color temperature on the FJ200 is closer to daylight than the Godox. The Godox starts to creep up over 6,000, whereas the Westcott really hugs that 5,500, 5,600 Kelvin range. Now, both of these lights have a color stable mode and an action freezing mode. And in that action freezing mode, the Westcott FJ200 did have better color stability than the Godox 8200 Pro. All right, in terms of battery, the Godox 8200 Pro battery slides in on the side and it has a flush fit. On the Westcott, it loads in the bottom and it does stick out a little bit. The Godox battery is capable of recycling full power 500 times, the Westcott FJ200 only 450. A little note here, the Westcott FJ200 does have an AC adapter and it just takes the place of the battery. Very seamless integration there. There is no such accessory on the Godox, so that's an advantage for the Westcott. Now in terms of recycle, when they are at full power, the Godox recycles in 1.8 seconds and the Westcott recycles in 1.3 seconds. So if you are fast on the trigger, then the Westcott is certainly gonna give an advantage in terms of recycle speed. While filming this video, I completely forgot to talk about the T.1 flash durations, and the reason I forgot is because, again, they're practically the same. In their action stopping modes, both of these lights perform the same across all power levels. All right, let's talk about functions real quick. Apart from that head modularity, there are very little functional differences between these lights. Both of them offer high-speed sync, both offer TTL, stroboscopic. Both of them can be controlled wirelessly from a trigger throughout all their modes. Both of them have that color stable and the action freezing mode. Both of them have a slave function and both of them are part of a bigger series of lights, which we're going over the entire series of these lights, so that should be pretty clear. There is a minor difference in terms of LEDs. Both of these have a very low powered LED that you can turn on. You're not gonna be able to use this to light a video. At most, you're gonna be able to use it to focus in the dark. But on the Westcott, the FJ200, only one head, we've got the LED right here in the center. On the Godox 8200 Pro, it depends what head you're using. So on the bare bulb, you have no LED. Fresnel head, you have a very strange LED on the top. And on the round head, you have three stages of LED. And then there's also an LED attachment, like a five watt LED attachment that you can put on here. So um, more seamlessly integrated LED because it's always here on the FJ200. Definitely like that it's always available on the Westcott. Although I don't find the LEDs useful at all. Okay, I've got both of the displays here at their max brightness. So this is maximum visibility and they're in the same lighting conditions, but you can see just higher contrast display on the Westcott FJ200. A little bit easier to see from a distance if you need to refer to the power level or if you're trying to set these up for the first time and you're outside in bright conditions, that's just gonna be easier on the Westcott FJ200. Now I find the display to be a little bit more clearly laid out on the Westcott FJ200, but pretty much every feature is accessible in the same way. For instance, we've got sound and whether we're in color or action freezing mode, both of those are represented with symbols that would require you to go into the menu to change. And that's exactly the same here. We've got the sound available, we're in color stable mode, and we would have to go into the menu to change them. All right, in terms of the default stand attachment that comes with it, I'm gonna hand it to Westcott again. They've just got a smoother, more sturdy, feels more well-built experience. However, there is no 
screw to tighten down the umbrella on the FJ200's attachment like there was on the Westcott FJ400. So you've got the friction clip only. So on both of these, if you put an umbrella in them and the wind blows the umbrella, it's designed so that the umbrella will slide out and there's no way to really lock those down on either of these default stand attachments. All right, both of these strobes have a proprietary mount that allows you to attach them to a small amount of light modifiers, but both of these can also fit into a Bowens S2 bracket, making them compatible with any Bowens mount modifier. So for all purposes, you can consider them equally compatible with the you know wider photography market of light modifiers. Now I said earlier, the FJ200 has that AC adapter option. That's an additional accessory that you can buy but there's nothing like that on the Godox 8200. The opposite is true when it comes to an extension head. So the 8200 Pro has an extension head that allows you to mount this really low on a light stand and take a tiny head and put that up at the top of a light stand. And there's no such accessory like that on the Westcott FJ200. Another unique accessory is this ADB2 or dual head adapter. And what this does, it allows you to put two of the Godox 8200 bare bulbs right here two of the 8200 power packs on the back. So this whole portion goes on the back here and then it's a Bowens mount. So you have a 400 watt light. You put both lights in the same group and it functions as if it were a single light. That is also unique to the Godox 8200 Pro. The Westcott FJ200's default price is 399. The Godox 8200 Pro, $349. And that is with the two heads, you can already find this a little bit cheaper, especially around this time of year, Black Friday. Um, I'm gonna give the edge to value on the Godox 8200 Pro just because it's been out for a little bit longer. You can get it under $300 at times, whereas this would be 30% more than that. So I do think that the 8200 Pro is a little bit better of a value, especially because it has those modularity aspects that the Westcott FJ200 just can't compete with. That being said, we've got those better recycle times on the Westcott FJ200. So if you're really looking for something that can keep up with fast pace shooting, then this is just going to be better. But I think anybody who's banking on that 1.3 second recycle time at full power, you just need to look at a more more powerful light because using a light continuously at full power at its peak recycle time, you're just gonna run into thermal issues and possibly even degrading the light long term. So if you're looking at this and thinking, oh gosh, 1.3 seconds, I'm gonna use that all the time, look at a bigger light. And as I said in the 400 comparison, I think for most users, it's not about how two lights stack up, it's about how the whole series of lights stack up and there just simply are more options under the Godox series or Flashpoint series than there are currently available under the Westcott FJ series. All right, I hope this answered any questions that you have about these two lights and how they compare to one another. I will be following up with the FJ80, the speed light from the Westcott series versus the Godox V1, Godox's round head speed light. And I'll also be doing a video covering the XJ2M trigger that controls the FJ series. So keep an eye out for both of those. Subscribe if you wanna catch those. Leave a like to this video if it helped you out. Both of these lights are linked in the description below if you're looking to purchase them, including the holiday deals on the Godox 8200 Pro. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.